Today we are playing in a private 1-3 poker game at an undisclosed location in Missouri. I've played against all these opponents except for one, and he really likes to get off the rails. There are straddles, bomb pots, and some deep stacked action. Buying in for $400 and we pick up a monster in the very first hand. Looking down at pocket aces for middle position in this one, I open it up to 15 bucks and we get only one caller. So that's pretty disappointing, but we're off to see a flop which comes down. Not a disappointing flop at all. We are flopping a full house here. With the board this locked up, I decide to go ahead and check when the small blind checks to me. And we're off to see a turn which comes down the two of diamonds. So no turns really too bad for us in this position. When it checks to me, I'm going to check again, hoping my opponent can catch up a little bit. River comes down, another two. We can't wait any longer, have to bet out $20. My opponent snap folds saying he's playing the board. I show my hand, we're taking this one down. Pretty good flop for us, pretty disappointing to not win more money, but we're off to a flying start. In the next interesting hand of poker, we're looking down at ace-king offsuit. We're under the gun this time. Obviously, we're going to open up to $15. Eventually, we see a younger player from the small line raise it up to $50. We've got a decision on our hands. What are we going to do here? I decide this time we're just going to go ahead and flat our ace-king. Since it's ace-king offsuit, I think we can just flat here. I don't think that's too terrible. And we're off to see a flop. Not the worst flop in the world for us. He checks. I decide we're going to go ahead and check it back here and see if we can improve. We might just have the best hand. Turn comes down an ace, so a great card for us. When he checks to us, I decide we're going to go ahead and bet out here. I'm not 100% sure which size to go with, but I don't think $40 sounds too bad. I think we want to bet a size that he can make the call, and sure enough, he does make the call. So we're off to see the river, which comes down an amazing one for us. The river is another ace. So when my opponent checks to me once again, I decide we are going to bet a large sizing here. We are sizing up. We are going to bet $175. I think I can be doing this as a bluff occasionally, but not very often. It's actually kind of hard for me to find bluffs on this particular board. Would I do this with a 10? I don't think so. So maybe this is a bad play here. My opponent says he doesn't think that I can be bluffing here, which I guess in his defense, maybe I can't find that many bluffs in this particular spot. But after thinking about it for quite a while, he eventually puts in the fold. So we're going to go ahead and take this one down. I don't know how often we're actually bluffing here, so maybe he makes a good point. Maybe we're not bluffing in this spot. A little bit later on, we're looking down at pocket jacks. We've got two black jiggities. We're in the small blind this time. We see a kind of spastic player open up to $15 preflop. They're like four callers. As you can see, I bumped that up to $75 here, and we get some pretty weird news. We see this kind of spastic, I feel like that's a good way to describe him, type player. He's going to raise it up here. He bets all of his green chips. I don't know if he knew how many green chips that was, but he raises it to $215 total, leaving himself about $200 behind. We get some additional kind of weird news when the under the gun two player goes all in for like $125. I'm in the tank here, guys. I'm not really sure what this particular player would be doing this with. I haven't seen him make a ton of really loose plays. There are players that I would definitely be calling with jacks here, but I just can't figure out why he would be doing this. I'm in the tank a bit on this one. It's kind of a hard decision. I'm not really sure what I want to be doing here in this spot against this player. This seems like a very unsolvable type spot. Like, I'm not going to be doing the same thing with this hand against this particular player that I'd be doing against other players. This just isn't a spot that really exists in a vacuum. So I decide eventually that while there's some chance we might be ahead of the re-raiser, there's no chance that we're ahead of the guy who went all in. So we eventually fold and we get some pretty good news here. We get to see the run out, which does not improve our hand. Obviously, we're seeing a board with two nines, a 10, and then another nine. So, and then we see queens. So we made a good play. The other player folds, so I guess we did have him in trouble, but we got away from a potential huge cooler spot. So good fold from us. Glad we figured that one out and guessed correctly at the end. Following up that pocket jacks hand, we've got Ace Knight of Diamonds from Under the Gun 2. We see one limp. I decide we're going to raise it up to $15, and we eventually go not one, not two, not three, not four, but five ways to the flop. So, hoping that we can hit this flop pretty hard, we hit it a little bit. The flop comes down Ace High with one diamond. We see the Under the Gun player, who is the old nit who we battle with seemingly in every game. Kind of annoying that we always end up getting involved with him, knowing that he's going to be very much on the nittier side. He bets $10, which I think is a blocker bet. I'm going to have him crushed here, I feel like anyway. I go ahead and raise it up to $45. The action folds back to him. 
pretty quickly. Seems like nobody else really had anything here. I'm not sure what he would have had. Maybe he had a queen, so maybe I messed up here and I could have gotten some more value from him, but I'm not really looking to go several streets with him here. If he's got something great, he's going to re-raise me and we can go ahead and just get out of here. If he doesn't have anything good, we've got a chance to improve. We could hit two pair or a flush. So he eventually folds. I think it was a blocker bet. So we go ahead and take this one down. Always feels good to win a little bit of money from the knit. He's going to sit there, though, and play almost no hands for the rest of the night, so won't be getting involved with him much more at all. Looking down at pocket sevens in this one, we're in the hijack this time. I decide we're just going to go ahead and call the $6 straddle from the button, and we end up going like four ways to the flop. This is not exactly the flop we had envisioned, guys. This is not the flop of our dreams. There is no seven. We see an early position player about $15. I go a little bit into the tank here. I don't think he's going to have that many aces or kings here. Maybe he'll have some flush draws, but I kind of block flush draws having the seven of diamonds. This feels like a weird spot. I feel like I could have actually gotten after it here since I have the seven of diamonds. And how many random aces is he really going to have where he just calls the straddle? Like, I don't know. I don't really see it, guys. I think we maybe missed a spot to get a bluff in here. I eventually fold, though, so. Oh, well. Opportunity missed. Looking down at pocket queens in the next one, we're under the gun plus one, and we decide to open up to 20 bucks pre-flop over an under the gun limper. We are getting some action on this one, guys. We get not one, not two, but three callers. So we're gonna go extremely multi-way to a flop. Obviously there's one in particular card we'd love to see, but there's a couple cards we'd like to avoid. But unfortunately, that's not exactly what happens for us. Flop comes down, ace high, not what we're looking for, but when the action checks to me, I'm gonna have all the aces here, so I decide to go ahead and bet out. We're gonna bet out $30 here, hoping that we can thin the field a little bit, or maybe just take this one down. That would be fantastic. But we get raised by a player. This is a new player, we have no information about him. He bumps it up to $75, and then we get some other pretty weird news when we see another player make the call. So. Obviously, not a whole lot of decision for us to make here. I don't think we are going to be continuing in this hand when we see two players very, very willing to continue in this hand in a very aggressive way. We go ahead and let our cards go, but we're hoping that we can see some action and get to see some showdowns on this hand as it's getting pretty big and getting pretty interesting. We eventually see a check raise on the King of Diamonds turn with all the money going in. Eventually, we get to see both players' hands we get to see that the player who check raised all in had flopped top two pair and the other player had pocket jacks. So, oh well, we get out of there. Sucks we could have won a big one there, but oh well. I think we played it right, and given the result, we definitely played it right. Looking down at Jack Eight of Clubs from the cutoff this time, when the action folds to me in this straddle pot, I decide to make it $20 to go, and we get called by the button and by the small blind. The button is a pretty loose player, and actually so is the small blind, but he's a competent young player, so he's the one I'm a little bit worried about in this hand. Flop comes down, not the best one for us. It's Ace, King, Jack. So we flop a pair here, but not much else going on with two overcards. But when the action checks to me, I've obviously got all the great hands in this spot. So I'm going to bet out $15, and we see the small blind make the call. So in this spot, we're more worried about flush draws, maybe some straight draws, things like that. But I don't think he's going to have too much right here. Turn comes down the seven of hearts, the small blind checks, and we've got a decision to make. We decide to go ahead and check back here. I don't think I like that. I think I should continue betting. The river comes down the two of spades, and we get some pretty weird news. We don't expect to see this move from the small blind, but he bets out $40, and I go into the tank. Nothing really makes too much sense for him to have here. I think he could have a busted flush draw a lot of the time. I think he could have no pair a lot of the time, and just have been floating. I don't really know. We're very happy to not see a diamond. I don't know why he would be value betting some sort of seven. Could he have a jack that's worse than ours? Would he have raised with a jack that was worse than ours pre-flop? Or a jack that was better than ours pre-flop? I'm not really sure. It's an interesting board. I decide we are going to go ahead and stick in the call. We're pretty happy when we show our hand and our opponent quickly mucks his. He pays us what I thought was a genuine compliment, or I still think is a genuine compliment, saying we played the hand brilliantly. We'll take it. I think I played this hand pretty well. We picked off a bluff. We had to stack some chips here, but I don't think it was anything too, too crazy, and I think it was a valiant bluff attempt from our opponent. Looking down at pocket nines under the gun in this one, I decide we're going to open it up here. We've got a pretty good hand. We make it $15 to go, and we see the spastic guy and a very active player both make the call. So 
We are going to be out of position this hand, obviously. But we're off to see a flop with a pretty decent hand. The flop comes down queen, seven, deuce, though. So no nine for us. That's kind of annoying. But we're going to go ahead and bet out here. We're going to go ahead and wager $30. I think that's a pretty reasonable size here into a $45 pot. I think it puts a good amount of pressure on club draws. So we're not too disappointed, but we're also not too happy when we see a caller. So only one caller, which is nice, and it's the more spastic player. We're off to see a turn, which comes down the king of diamonds. So now there's another flush draw out there. I think we have to continue to apply pressure, especially if our opponent has a flush draw here, which is what I expect him to have a very good amount of the time. We're going to bet out a little bit on the bigger side here. We bet out $50 and we see the snap fold. So I do think he had a flush draw. I think we bet the correct amount and we get the fold. So we take this one down. So guys, I messed up. I thought I hit the record button on this hand, but apparently I didn't. I did record the very, very, very end of it. In this one, we're looking down at queen jack suited from the button. We see a pretty loose player open up to $15. I make the call and we see the small blind who is an extremely loose, kind of calling station-y type player also make the call. So we're off to see a flop, which is a great one for us. We were flopping a flush draw and an open into straight draw. Action is checking to me, which is a little bit surprising, but I guess not that surprising on this exact board. I decided we're gonna go ahead and bet out here. We're gonna try and build a pot. We've got a huge draw here. I bet $20. We see the initial razor fold, which is not exactly what we were hoping for, but we see the small blind make the call. So we were counting on at least one of them calling. The small blind calling makes a lot of sense. That's kind of his whole jam. Turn comes down, bang, three of spades. So we don't have to wait to bank, bank off our flush. We just hit it right off the bat. He checks to me. I decided we're going to bet again here. I bet $40 this time. Wanted to keep it to a relatively small sizing to keep him in the pot. He calls without thinking about it for very long. So that's good news. Off sea river, not the best card. It pairs the board. So that's a little bit unfortunate. But when he checks to me, I don't think we have a choice here. We have to go for value. I'm going to go a little bit on the bigger side, at least perceived bigger side. I bet $110, hoping that he'll make the call and hoping that maybe I can even get called light here if he thinks that I'm trying to represent a seven or a flush. I don't really know what the max sizing I can get to call here, but I feel like over $100 is pretty good. He thinks about it for not very long, makes the call, and he shows us pocket jacks. So we take this one down, one of the bigger pots of the evening, so it's really irritating that I messed up recording it, but you can see me stacking chips here, so at least we get a little taste of what it was like to win one of the bigger hands of the night. A little late hitting the record button on this one, but we've got three deuce of clubs from the small blind. I've got around $700 in front of me. I end up calling the three bucks from the small blind, and we go four ways to a flop, which comes down a pretty good one for us. We are flopping an hope-ended straight flush draw. The action ends up checking through. Turn comes down the nine of spades, and the action checks through again. River comes down the ace of spades. So obviously we're going to bet out here. We've waited around as long as we can possibly wait and we hit our hand. So we're feeling really good. What's an amount that we can bet and we can get somebody to fold after some deliberation. I finally decided to bet out $20 and we see one fold and we see more folds. We're going to take this one down. That kind of sucks. I don't think we could have gotten any more money though. Nobody was going after this pot whatsoever. Looking down at Jack 10 of hearts, we're a little late to hit the record button in this one. We see an open to $15 from middle position. I make the call and we see the small blind raise it to $36, a very specific size. We see the initial raiser make the call and I don't think we have too much of a decision to make here with a very good hand like this where we really want to see a flop. We decide we are going to go ahead and come along. We're making the call here too. Off to see a flop, which comes down. Not exactly what we were looking for. The flop comes down with zero hearts and just a nine. Weirdly enough on this flop though, the action ends up checking to me. I decided to go ahead and check it back and we're off to see a turn, which is a great one for us. It's the eight of spades. So when the action checks to me, now with an open-ended straight draw and nobody going after this pot, I'm gonna bet out $55. We immediately see a call from the initial razor and we see, or we see a call from the razor and we see a fold from the other player. River comes down, a jack, he checks. I'm gonna go ahead and snap check this back. We get some weird and bad news though when he shows us pocket kings. So not exactly what we thought we'd see here, but I guess with the ace on board, he didn't play this too oddly. So, oh well, we're losing this one. Would have been nice to hit our draw and get some value out of those pocket kings though. Looking down at king, queen of clubs, we're gonna open it up to $15 from the button here. We see a young, aggressive player make the call. So we're off to see a flop, which comes down. A pretty good one for our range, but not a good one for our hand. The flop is a 6 He checks, 
And when we see a check here, we're obviously gonna go ahead and continuation bet a board, a paired board that's so good for my hand as opposed to his hand, although he'll have way more sixes than me. I decided to go ahead and bet $15. And without thinking about it for very long, but he didn't snap do it, he clicks it back, he raises it up to $50. Thinking about it for a second, I don't really know what hands he's gonna be doing with this with. I don't even really think he would do it with a six. Is he gonna have some aces here? I think for sure, but not a ton of aces as I would expect him to three bet. Eventually, after thinking about it for a bit, I decide we're just gonna go ahead and let this one go. We have a little bit of a conversation with him. He claims to have had ace queen here. I don't really know if I believe him. He said he was playing it weird though, so maybe he was just trying to catch me doing something. But, oh well, he gets this one through, he wins. Maybe he just had the best hand though. So, oh well, on to the next one. We've had a bit of card death going on, but in our last interesting hand of the night, we're looking down at pocket eights. I decide to call $15 pre-flop, and we get some annoying news when we see another opponent raise it up to $45. So obviously, we're gonna go set mining here. I don't know if I love it, but it seemed pretty clear that we weren't gonna face any more aggression. So over 30 extra dollars, we're gonna get a chance to hit a set and it goes very multi-way. It goes four ways to the flop. So four players put in $45. Can we please, please, dealer, see uh, eight one time. We have flopped zero sets tonight. We've had almost zero big hands. We've had zero luck flopping sets lately. Please, can we get one? Unfortunately, that is not what we get. We get a king high flop. The action checks the button. Who bets $75? What are we gonna do here, guys? I bet you can guess it. This is a no set, no bet situation. We're gonna go ahead and pretty quickly, as soon as the action's on us, we're mucking this hand. We're out of there. Time to get out of here. We've been very card dead. It's been a long night. We're taking what profit we've still got. Well guys, we were into the game for $400, out for $525 to snap our losing streak. We froze our nads off getting into this game. It was around 10 degrees and very snowy, so take a second hit the thumbs up button. I read and reply to every single comment, so any questions or comments you have, please leave them below. See you on Tuesday with another episode and hopefully another win.